Hi, and welcome to this short instruction video for the customer database template. Let me show and explain all the features that will make your work easier. This template is predefined as B2B database, but those kind of databases not always met our needs. Sometimes our collected data is a little bit different from the predefined one, and we, if we change it, the template is not so useful anymore. But not this time. In this template, we decided to give you the maximum flexibility of input data, but also the output calculation. And don't worry, you don't need to be an expert to modify it according to your needs. So firstly, let's see what the template contains. We have two input sections and three outputs. Let's go first to the input table. This way it will be easier later to understand the settings sections. As you can see, in the input there are predefined headers, but maybe not all of them I need or even want. I will delete the CEO column and instead of alternative name, I will add a first contact date. Let me input some dates. Plus, I want an extra column, which is not existing in here, but I want to have it in between of those two dates. Let's just fill it simply. In some of the columns, I have drop downs. For example, in here, in here, here, and few others later. But those drop downs are only a suggestions because maybe sometimes you have much more options than the drop down allows for. So in this case, you can just override it and it will be still a valid information. So I can change like I have here to the new type and the new type two and all of those inputs are valid. So now let's go to the settings. Here I have a date section. I have to decide here how I want to see my date, the format I want to see in the output data. I also need to tell to Excel which of my newly added columns are the dates. I will select them in here. If I don't do it, the output date will be visible as a number. So if I don't change it now, I will notice it, notice it later. Don't worry, it can be changed or updated at any moment. On the right side, we have those predefined drop-down lists. That is what I was showing a moment ago. If you change the name of the column, the drop-down list will still work. Also, the title will change according to the column that you have changed. However, if you delete related column, the dropdown will disappear as well. Now let's go to the output. In the output list, we can choose up to 10 different columns and we can change at any moment what we want to see. Then I can decide the filters. I can update them, I can change them, I can choose whatever I want in here. They can seem a little bit complicated, but they are really easy to figure out. So let's change some of them. First contact date. I want to be above. I am choosing here a data input title. So let's change to the country. I'm choosing the comparison option. In this case, above does not make sense. So I'm choosing equals and I can choose from the dropdown list one of the countries that came up with the dropdown. I can also choose above and below and use the same filter if I want to have a range. So let's make it with a little bit more data and choose a revenue, for example, or value, let's see the revenue here. 
and we will be able to compare if our filter works properly. We want above 22,000 and below 60,000. Cool, all works. You can change the filters at any moment, don't forget about this. So for example, let me remove it, change this. This customer is using not only Oracle, but also SAP. So if I want to filter it as a technology used, if I use equals, for example, SAP, it will only choose the one that are exactly SAP. But if I choose include, that will also choose the other ones, which are using the SAP and other technologies. Okay. I think it's clear now. Let's go to the next section, the form. I will create a form from the scratch. I will remove all the data that I have here and I will choose all of the options that I have. In the first column, I have a sections that are splitting my form into the different subjects. So for example, basic inform information, location, value, and employees, etc. Those sections I can define in the settings as well. Let's go back just to show you. In this first table, we have the form sections and here is where we are defining them. So let's go and choose some of them. Location and uh, employees. And now in those two columns, I can choose the data that I have in my input table. Now, when the form is created, we can just choose next after next ID and, this, and see the single results as a form that we have just prepared. And finally, a chart dashboard. What we have here are six different charts that are already defined and formatted. What I need to do is just choose which data I want to see in each of them. Some of them are more useful for some types of data, some of them for others. But you can just check change and decide what looks better and works best for you. Here we have some top values in those three charts. Here are the total counts of all of the customers or any kind of data input that we have given. We are choosing here from the drop downs what actually we want to see, what we want to see as a counted total values. In those two charts, we have input X and Y. And in those two charts, the best input values as an X, as an X value is a numeric value. So that's why the only values available in here in the dropdown are the numeric values. The last chart is a histogram that will be best used for some kind of numeric input that we want to group. For example, number of employees. All the charts are described in each of the chart titles so you can understand what you can see and how it works. Okay, that's all for now. I hope the video was helpful. Thank you for watching and don't forget to check our other templates at www.someca.net